So hello everyone, my name is Cheeseball and I'll be talking to you today about the Twilight Suro cards. So I've played this game around maybe 20 plus, 30 plus times. And I think this is still a first impression tier list. I've not played with all the cards. Um, I've played with most of them and I'll give you my first impressions of them. So in the Twilight Suro row, there are currently 19 cards. One of them which is a promo card. So if you pre order you would have it or if you play online, you would see it. And that is Python Genius Advisor. We'll talk about it later. So we'll talk about some of the more expensive and marquee cards of the set. First of which is Twisted Mantad. So for four Twilight Suit Cubes, you can get a card which allows you to recall an agent. So Urgent Mission uh, is one of the best cards in the game. You know, whenever you draw that entry card, you are very excited. However, Twisted Mantad, for me, this card is trash. I, I do not know why it plays out so badly, but every time you get this card, you end up going to Mentat a lot. <laughs> That's all you kind of use this card to, to do. I mean, some other times you you go to other spots and it might be good, but the the, the, the sheer amount of cards that you require to, to play this card is, is, is way too much. So let's say if you have Swordmaster, right, you're playing three cards already. With this, you're playing four. And because this is a graph card, right, you need to graph this card to someone, uh, another card, means that you need to play five cards total. In such a situation, you are rarely buying a Spice Must Flow. And uh, the fifth card that you are grafting is normally not a very good on play effect. So ends up you are grafting convincings to it or daggers to it. And it doesn't work out very well. Often when you have this card, you need to spend your turn to draw. And, and normally on, on rounds that you draw, you want to buy Spice Must Flows. But when you play this card, all you want to do when you draw it is to play more cards. And the card quality is very, very bad. Maybe someone will show me that this card is broken, but it has not impressed me any time I've seen it. It's also very expensive. Four cubes is your entire budget for buying Twilight Suit cards. This card is trash. <laughs> Next on the list, we'll talk about Gola. So Gola is a one uh, three cost card, and the ability is to copy the ag agent box as the other grafted card. A lot of people think this card is broken. You know, it leads to very powerful combos, and it does. And some people hate this card because the amount of rules that you have to that you have to tag onto this card, or the amount of like uh, annex that you have to add onto this card, is endless. What if I graph this card? What if I graph this card? No, it's an endless uh, game of rules. But is this card good? Yes, this card is good. This card is, is uh, you know, when this card appears on the road, you know, everyone races to buy it. You know, um, I think even when you if, you, if you play it and you play it with an experimentation, you know, and you get a double research, I think the, the, the baseline is quite all right. Um, when you buy this card, however, you want, do want to purchase cards with good on-play effects. I think until you do, the card value is low, but once you purchase one or two cards with good on-play effects, this card's value goes up immensely. I do think it sits on the back of the S tier because it requires a lot of support and by itself it does, doesn't win you the game. So the next card I want to talk about is Usurp. So Usurp is the other 4 cost card. So f once again, 4 cubes is very very expensive. The the difference between this and Twisted Mantat is that when you play this, you do not need to use a card in hand. So uh, you kind of have five cards constantly to play out. I think later on in the game, sometimes the row might be a little bit clogged up. But even then, there should still be options for you to play that are good. This card is really is quite a good card. You know, it, is, it leads to a lot of flexibilities, you know, and if you have your um, Atomics token, you know, it, it gives you value as well. Every time this card is out, you know, people will rush to buy it. It's a good card. Try it out. So I'll talk about another card that I like. So Corino Jeans. Corino Jeans is a one cost card that if grafted, you get, you get a beetle. It has limited access to the Emperor. But the best thing about this card is that when you buy it, you get two Solari. And when you can get two Solari early in the game, you know, it is very, very powerful. A lot of times, it, buying this card will allow me to uh, get that Sword Master or get that extra Mantet that I need to push me over the edge to, to get my earlier game objectives. 
So do not underestimate this too early Solari. The card by itself is not terrible as well. Uh, I think going to the Emperor is, is fine and if you can graft it, getting a Beetle is, is fine as well. But this two Solari, this two Solari is worth buying this card. If, if you see it, do consider it. It will speed up your game. So we'll move on to another one cost card, an Industrial Espionage. So what do I think about this card? I've never seen it played. I've seen it bought like once, but I've not seen it being played. It, it's a bad card. It has bad access, you know, and you need to graft it. And there, I mean, the set is about grafting, but there, to be honest, there are not many grafting cards. And the cards that you can graft, you probably do not want to graft to this. Probably if you have a, like four, four or five grafting cards in your deck, maybe this will be good. But I have not seen anyone play it. And till then, it's still trash. So next of, next of the cards is from the tanks. I really want to like this card. I play a lot of green leaders. I play Ilban. I play Lito. I even consider Elysia a green leader. So and and I've been trying to get this card to work, but every time I buy this card, this card disappoints me. It doesn't do anything in any deck, um, as compared to Saluka Legion. So Saduka Legion allows you to go to wealth as, as, as well and also when you review you can deploy 3 troops that card is a lot more flexible than this this card is too expensive for its cost if it costed 1 I'll consider it but costing 2 is too much you you have a bad card in your deck that maybe grants you troops that you can't deploy uh, and these 2 cubes do not f further your your points getting on the Toraxu, uh on the Toraxu track the beetle track so this card is trash. Next on the list, we have Contaminator. Contaminator is one of those cards which when I look at it, it looks like um, Jameis. It reminds me of Jameis. And so I think Jameis is a bad card. However, I think Falconer thinks that Jameis is a good card. So take this with a grain of salt. I do think when you play this card, this card can be good. You know, and this card is good if you play it. The issue with uh, a card with like this is that it's very rigid. You know, there are not many places you can go. Most of the time, you can only take a water. Sometimes you can bring troops. Yeah, and you get. I mean, the the best part about it is that you get a beetle. Uh, I think sometimes it will sit in your hand and just be reviewed for one, and you don't want cards that review for one in your deck. So the the kicker to this card, I feel, is that if you do have Swordmaster. Or if you are in position to grab an early sword master, this card goes up in value tremendously. If you have a spare action to play to the Fremen, I think this card is very very strong. So if you have sword master, this goes up way way higher, maybe all the way to uh, eight here. So do, do do take note about that. But until you get sword master, I think don't think this is very good. It's a meh tier. So next on the list, we have uh, Beguiling Pheromones. Beguiling Pheromones is one of those cards that require you to have other cards with faction access. So how many cards do you have in your deck with faction access? You have one. You have a Diplomacy. So as such, this card, I think it's okay. Um, the effect is, itself is powerful enough to, to warrant purchasing this card. Now, when you purchase this card, all your Diplomacies become power plays and I guess we established that power plays are pretty good a card. The issue is that if you trash uh, all your access th then you can't really get the points anymore. So you you do need to have access cards in your deck. I think as this card works very well with full spaces or other cheap access cards. So when you buy this card do note that you have to have those cards or you do have to prioritize those cards a little bit higher. I think this card can trash itself um, but if you only have one Diplomacy and one Pheromones in your deck, it's very likely that you won't draw them together for a few rotations and then this will just sit in your hand. So do purchase more Faction Access cards and um, if, if, if you have a decent amount, this card is, is then okay. Next on the list is Chair Dog. So Chair Dog is one of those cards which I think some people really really like. Uh, there are some cases where it plays out very well. However, for the cards you have in your deck, the, the baseline cards, what are you going to play it with? An experimentation. You know, you're going to get a research pump and then you're going to get one more cube. Um, it it kind of like doubles up your, your card to your other card to be uh, on play and then on a reveal as well. So you get both effects on top and bottom. I think once you some cards are very good with it. Cards like Opulence or Stilgar. You know, cards that are 
that require both sides of the cards or cards that are naturally good on both sides. However, not many cards are like that. So that's why it's only an you know, okay tier. It's a good graph. Uh, grafting, grafting in generally is a good uh, effect. Um, yeah, but I think the, the, the pool of cards that, are, that really benefit from this is quite limited. And as such, it's still in the okay tier. I've I purchased it a few times and regretted it, but I've seen it work out as well. Next on the list is Guild Impersonator. So Guild Impersonator, if you gain a spice this turn, you can get a spacing bump, and then you also have a spacing access. So either way, when you're playing this card, you probably will get a, a spacing influence, which which is alright. Um, the kicker is that if you are Elysia, this card becomes insane. You know, should if you're playing Elysia, this is like an S tier card. You know, you can always get this card off and get a spacing bump. This this card works well with the other spacing cards that uh, that the the new spacing cards that give you a benefit. Uh, I think all of them kind of work well with it. And I have some games where uh, I I've played it and you know this card is is really good. Um, however. I've seen many times when people buy this card and they just reveal it and I think I see that quite often as well. So that's why it only says on the OK tier. But do note if you're playing Elysia, this card is very very good. Buy it. So next on the list is Face Dancer Initiate. So Face Dancer Initiate is, uh, has three faction accesses and it allows you to graph. Most of the time when you buy it, you want to play it with your experimentations and suddenly your experimentations can go to faction spots which increases the value of the card tremendously. So I think that's in graph in general. When you graph, you early on in the game you're graphing to experimentations and, and having to be able to play the experimentations and not go to experimentations is very good by itself. This has good access, you know, through the game, you know, it will allow you to get these three friendships very easily. And as such, I think it's a quite an alright card. I'm quite happy to pick this up on the row. The only time I'm not happy is that if I'm really trying to buy Spice Mask Flows and um, I am not struggling on the on the faction access. But most of the time, this is, a, is, is quite a good card to pick up. So do try it out. So the next card we are talking about is Scientific Breakthrough. Scientific Breakthrough costs 3 Tonexu Cubes as uh, yeah, same access as the ring, green, blue and, and yellow and the on-play effect is that you get a research icon and then you also get the trash card when you get to the second genetic marker for a point. So points are very good in this game and anytime you can resolve this card, this card is, is very good. So there's a certain point on the game where everyone will want to buy this card and so you just need to Make sure you're ahead of the curve and purchase this card before someone else does. You know, if, if someone else, it will deny someone else the point if you, if you do purchase it. And because the first genetic marker lets you put it on top of the deck, you know, if you are, I think, maybe two steps away from the end, you can probably purchase this, you know, and go to research station with this card, get a double research bump, and then you can trash this card for a point. So it translates into a point very easily and I mean even if even if you don't do it, someone else will do it. So that that's what makes it a good card. It's a when it shows up it's a point for someone. I don't think you should buy this card early or rush to buy it. Uh but you can. I don't I think even if you do you, you won't hate yourself too much. So next on the list is subject X one thirty seven. So subject X one thirty seven, uh for two cubes you can buy it and get a beetle. I think that's the most important part about this card you know it's cheaper than the other card the the other baseline card for you to get beetles that cost three so the i mean the bad part normally is you have a bad card in your deck but this card by itself is also not very bad you know if you if you do get it and you are able to do, to have the first genetic marker every time you play it you know you can get a beetle you know you can always just go mentat or maybe if you have shipping access you, know, you can play it and get a beetle it often translates into a point by itself so this card is, is pretty good, especially if you're the, at the first genetic marker. I think if I'm near the first genetic marker, I'll definitely consider buying it. So the next card on the list is Slick Farmer. Slick, uh, Slick Farmer has impressed me tremendously. Every time I buy this card, I, I, I feel like this card is generating me a lot of value and winning me the game. It's a green graft card and every time you graft it to another card, and most of the time you're going to graft it to diplomacies, 
four spaces or your ring, right? And you get a bunch of salary. And this salary can translate into beetles, but what else it can translate into? It can translate into sword masters, it translates into um high councils, you know, and, and and being able to enable those actions, you know, is, is very powerful. So early salary is very important and slick farmer kinda enables that. Um, and late in the game, you also can convert your salary into into beetles. So, so do try this card. This card is really quite good. I think it has impressed me every time I bought it. Next on the list, we have Face Dancer. Face Dancer is a it's a two costed card, and every time you play it, you you get to play whatever Face Dancer initiate is. But in addition, you draw a card. Normally, when you play a graph card, your 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 net minus two, but with Face Dancer, your your net minus one because Face Dancer cycles itself. I think having the ability to cycle itself makes a card a lot stronger as well. I think whenever you have cards that allow you to draw, you know they draw into themselves more, and they, and then you get to play your good cards more often. So I, I I do like this card. This card is always good in the game. Enables a lot of combos as well through the Emperor, Spacing, and Fremen, uh, depending on what tag you need. Uh, so do try this card out. This card is is on on the baseline is good. So next we're moving on to our top tier, right? And all the remaining cards are top tier. And I, I don't think that left to right, you know, they are arranged the, the best. I, I'm, I'm not so sure amongst them which is the best. And most of the time, you only see two of them. So you can just try whatever you feel like playing. Uh, you, it's not as though you'll see five of them and you have to choose. Okay, so for stage horror, right, what, um, it allows you to to graph on a, to a blue space and also uh, gives you a scarab which is most important allows you to trash which allows a very uh, niche deck building strategies also allows you to get water which is rare and you know if you have a troop you can deploy into combat so this card is overall very good it enables uh, enables deck building strategies tremendously you know with, with this card uh, you can enable that uh, deck building strategy and you also can get beetles and beetles will generate you uh, maybe a, a point plus you know, with this card you can comfortably get to the end of the the toilet suit track and that's a point so because it enables a point this card is good I've seen it used in combat strategies as well uh, as well as some artillery strategies um, yeah overall it's a good card I don't get to play with it very often as it flies off the roof Next on the list is Python Genius Advisor. So Python Genius Advisor has is, is one of the top tier non-graph cards. When you play it, you get to lose a troop and draw two cards and get a research icon. Uh, the, the card is best when you have uh, shipping access, but if you don't have shipping access, it's still not that bad. You can go to Mentat and enable this ability as well. Um, the, the issue I find with this card is that you have to lose a troop and in uh, immortality losing losing a troop is quite significant you often don't have enough troops in immortality and spending three cubes to get two cubes uh three, spending three cubes to get two troops uh feels bad at times but i think when you do buy pyda you, you or very often you need to spend the three cubes to buy two troops Okay. But the effect is very very strong. You know being able to draw two cards you know and draw get a research icon that is a whole um that's a whole res uh, research center space, you know, and as such, this card is very, very strong from the from the play effect. It will enable a lot of spice and slows and allows you to progress up the track very quickly. I, I do like this card a lot, but do note about uh, this losing a troop thing. It has come up multiple times. I think I've played with this card maybe four times and two of the times I've struggled to lose a troop, but this card is still good. Next on the list, we'll talk about Unnatural Reflex. Unnatural Reflex is one of those cards that um, cycle into itself as well. You know, it cycles into itself very easily as you can always play it. You, you don't need to go to yellow space, you just craft it something and then you cycle two cards. And being able to cycle cards is very strong as it allows you to play your stronger cards more often. So I really like this card. The issue with this card is that you do need to get to the first genetic marker. A lot of time when you're rushing to get your, your first card off the row when you buy it, when it comes to your first rotation, a lot of times it doesn't um, you don't qualify for the first genetic marker and thus you don't get the effect and if you don't get the effect of the first genetic marker to draw two cards this card is is terrible so the the 
that's why that's why in my guide for the research track I do advise if you do buy this card to to chase the top row as you do need to get to the first genetic marker for this card to generate you any value and if you play this card and you don't have that genetic marker this card is absolute trash but once you do this card is amazing you know you can always play it to draw two cards to cycle out and draw your better cards I, I'm always happy to have it once I have the genetic marker so just do watch out for the genetic marker. It is a requirement and it is painful at times. So sitting on the top of my list is Twilight Infiltrator. Um, this card might not seem like much, but uh, enemy agents don't block you this turn and you get to cycle this card. I think that is very, very good. Um, how often in the game do you need to go to spaces that are blocked by someone else? Late in the game, be it a research station or middle of the game when you go, you need to go in, into cellar shipping. You no, know, both are, are very, very good to to infiltrate. You know, um, and even if you don't infiltrate, you can always just play this card to to cycle. So at the baseline, it's very, very good. The effect of I'm not even talking about the when you have two genetic markers to get in three card, and if you enable that, that's even better. But even without that, this card is already very, very good. I'm always happy to pick this card up. I think it enables a lot of uh, flexibility and it, at a baseline, it's, it's not bad. So always do try to pick this card up. But then, I think among all the top cards, you know, they're all, they are all very, very good. You should try all of them. But early on in the game, especially if you are someone who plays this game regularly, do try all the cards. I think that's the best way to, to get a feel of the cards yourself. I think when I when the set first came out, Twisted Mantet was seemed broken, you know, like an extra agent. That's insane. However, now I play it and I, I hate the card. I will not buy it most of the time. So I hope you enjoyed this, this tier list and I hope it is helpful in your Dune Immortality games. See you around.